Las Vegas starts now. Yes, it does. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada. That groovy little podcast that gives you a true first-person look into what it's like to call Sin City your home. The Living in Las Vegas Podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Scott, did you hit the record button? Yes. I mean, would have been the first time you forgot. I your know, host, a man who clearly needs some kind of introduction, otherwise you wouldn't know who he was. This is a tough room. Mr. Scott. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Living in Las Vegas podcast here on the Vegas Video Network. Oh, that's very kind of you. And hey, let me be the first to congratulate you because you're watching or listening to... That's better. <laughs> the applause wasn't quite as loud as I wanted it to be. Uh, you're uh, watching or listening to the longest-running podcast about Vegas that actually originates from Las Vegas. What? Who would have thought of that? Me. Which means that we're not only going to cover what it's like to live here, we're going to be talking about adventures on the Strip and downtown Fremont Street, other cool places here in the Valley. And by the way, if you're a tourist or a fan, hell, you might be thinking about moving to our fair city. Well, this show's like your own secret handshake to all things cool and groovy. Hey, we're free the first and third Tuesday of every month at 7 o'clock Pacific time at VegasVideoNetwork.com forward slash live. Again, VegasVideoNetwork.com forward slash dot, dot <laughs> slash live. Uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, I have a whole new domain dot live slash Fratistat slash tweet You're tweet. just going to appear on a separate line item on GoDaddy's statement report. We, uh, that's right. Report We're all, speaking of all over the place, like Christina Aguilera tells you, come on over. Join us in the live chat. Listen, some of the nicest people you're ever going to meet. It's literally a kumbaya online with these cool people in the live chat. As a matter of fact, there they are right there. See, they're already saying nice things to each other. Hey, Mom. Hey, Tammy Lee. I love you guys. That's, that's the kind of live chat people we've got. And there's also magic that happens before and after the show. We do a little pre-show. You get to see how the sausage is being made. And then post-show, that's VVN2. That's Vegas Video Network that's After Dark. Sausage. That's when you see the sausage. That's fantastic, mm. uh, considering your son's here. Um, uh, it's fantastic. So, for instance, last week, our, our two show, our last show, a couple weeks ago, you saw my head explode as a result of a lot of technical problems we were having on the show. Well, that was big fun. I wouldn't say a lot of people saw it, Scott. Well, nobody saw it actually uh, live, but well, we saw it after, after, the, uh, after the fact. Anyways, come on over, join all the cool people who you see right there in the live chat. And by the way, they're all over the place. Hell, we got people in every darn country in the world. That's right, 175 countries, and we see them all. That's how magical we are. Hey, I'm your host, Scott Whitney. Uh, konnichiwa, buenas noches. How you doing, hot stuff? Hey. Uh, I'm the owner of the Vegas Video Network, so on behalf of all the shows, thanks for watching. And on behalf of this groovy little podcast, watch. thanks for watching this as well. And there is our man Wayne. Well, hello there. Hello there. Oh, aren't you looking nice this evening? Aren't you nice? Um, we got some new live chatters, a couple new live chatters. First, we've got Wanna Be in Vegas. I want to be in Vegas is Michelle. Really? Yes. I would not have thought it was a woman. Just wouldn't have thought it. Well, I mean. She's been watching since fun. February of 2017. That's almost a Almost year. a year. That's, and she's just showing up now. She's, she, she probably, she's well, probably like, like a month. Well, like a good swimming pool. You put your foot in first. Right. Kind of gauge the she's temperature. Like, Can we trust these two? Yeah. Eh, I'll come and ch check them out. We'll see what's going on. Found us on the YouTube, and she's from Reno. So she wants to be in Vegas. She's an eight-hour eight drive. Mm, Come Vegas on down. City. Come on south. And we also have the Ace of Bats uh, watching us for the first time in the live chat. It's Eric, who is from Brooklyn, but he's going to medical school in Denver. Well, isn't that? How do you do? Fancy. Uh, he wants to be a proctologist. Oh. Nothing wrong with that. No. I, Nothing the wrong. The world needs them. You gotta, somebody's got to do it. Right. I've had it happen. I've I heard don't about like it. it. Actually, that's more of a urologist who does that one thing. Mm -hmm. How's that feel? By the way, here's some inside scoop for you. <laughs> By the way, he's been watching us for many months. If you have a prostate exam, mm -hmm. right? It's the world's greatest show. 
you know what they're looking, hot. You know what they're looking for? So they, they, they insert your finger, or not your finger, <laughs> but how, how fun would that be? Stick your own finger in your butt, would you? No, thanks. Mm. Um, and then they, they, they're touching the prostate. You're not old enough to know this, but it's I, coming. Not, nah. And they're feeling it, and it should feel like this part of your of your. Uh, well, hand. no, that's what they say a good a, a steak should feel like. A and grill. a prostate. A healthy prostate <laughs> feels like fantastic. this. If it feels bumpy or hard, that is is not a good deal. Okay, let's uh, begin the big show. Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) we've got some celebrity in the house. We've got Santa Scott here. Hello, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Santa Scott did not expect to see you tonight. I'm very happy to be here. I mean, it is the season. It is. Um, So I know know you're working hard. Uh, Your your normal elves couldn't make it tonight. Nope. So they're busy. I'm I'm here. uh, I'm here to accompany you. Fantastic. And clearly, word got out that Santa Scott was going to be here tonight amongst the the uh, the underground uh, internet users. Uh, Maybe it got out on Reddit or something. I'm not sure. It could be because if you look out over the crowd, Santa Scott, there are more kids here than there have ever been before for the show. At least a hundred times more kids. Correct. Fantastic. So uh, here's the thing: we had such a good turnout, Mm. uh, Santa Scott. Yeah. That what I actually had to do was kind of uh, go through and and uh, kind of pre-interview uh, <laughs> some of the some of the little kids out there. <laughs> um, and so because we we can't we're not gonna be able to get to everyone tonight. It's it's just a fact of life. Of course not. <laughs> it's only a it's only a sixty minute show. So uh, so if we go to two shots, Santa Scott. Okay. Boop. Uh, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, I, I just kind of took some notes from the kids. Fair enough. So that we can get get through more of them, so everybody can have a merry Christmas. Very okay? helpful elf you are. So I am uh, Santa Scott. I'm gonna give you uh, the name okay. of of one of our you know one of the kids that I've I've pre screened. This is this is a Vegas person now. This is a, well, clearly we're local, right? I mean, so it's yeah. kind of like you're going to say Vegas people. Do I were you? Do I think that you are naughty or nice? Well, I'm, I'm gonna for, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what they want for Christmas. Fair enough. And uh, you know, kind of maybe on some of them, I've got a little little uh, resume of their year's achievements. A little background. You. A little background. Fantastic, helpful. And then and then Santa Scott, since you're the the grantor of all wishes, Vegasy. It's a good job, by the way. Uh, that you. Well, it's like Chris Phillips, kind of. I get to do whatever I want, right? Yeah. Uh, you will let the all the little boys and girls and Vegas people out there know if they're going to get their their wish for Christmas. I'm ready. Not. Okay, let's go. So our first Christmas wish uh, comes from uh, little Brian Sandoval. The, little Brian Sandoval, right. little sure. Brian, yeah, uh, the governor of Nevada. Yep, uh, still a believer. I call him Sandy. Right. Yeah. We, go, we go way back. Oh, absolutely. I, I go mean, way back with everybody. I'm Santa Claus. Santa's Come Scott. on. Right. So now it uh, turns out, so Brian, um, Brian was, uh, did, you know, you can't be perfect, right? Mm-hmm. Every, every, no. everybody does something a little wrong. Well, he's a politician, right? Well, correct. Yeah. So, so uh, on the naughty list or on uh, naughty, naughty bits for this year. Yep. Uh, Brian uh, did endorse Donald Trump for president. Bad boy, Brian. Okay. But. You know, he did some nice things as well. He's got uh, very high approval ratings. Uh-huh. He's a very popular governor in the state of Nevada. Uh-huh. He brought in some business investments this year. Yeah. Do we know what business investments? Uh, well, Tesla. That was that was a year prior. But yeah. uh, Amazon's going to do some investing here in some warehouses. Okay. Fine, so fine, fine, fine. he's trying, right? He steered Nevada through the the turbulence of the. Yes. Uh, of the the depression era, right? Uh, or the, the recession <laughs> the era? Yeah. Recession area, the, the the economic depression we were in. <laughs> so here's the thing, though, uh, Brian. It yeah. turns out I don't know if you saw it. Read the newspaper. I mean, you're yeah. omniscient. It doesn't matter. You're Santa Scott. I so find it to be time consuming when it to. just comes into my you head. You don't have to read the newspaper. Don't have to. So uh, I have people who do that for me, little Brian. After 27 years of marriage, did you see this? Yes, well, I did. You know this already. I do know this. After 27 years of marriage, uh, uh, announced he's getting divorced. Whoops. 
right? Yep. Grown children, getting ready. He's going to be out of office for term limits. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have some free time on his hands. He's going to be retired now. Getting divorced after 27 years. Yeah. Um, Does so, that say anything to anybody but me? Well, so Brian's wish uh, for Christmas, he wants, he's wishing that the reason for his divorce never comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. His wish, Santa Scott? Okay. Well, that's a good one. You know, and Brian, you look at Brian. He's a good-looking guy, right? I have no idea Looks how like old is he. Is. He does have a choir boresque mm -hmm. look to him. How old is this guy? Nobody knows. Forty, ages, fifty, well. sixty. He could good be genius. any one of those three, and you'd be like, "Yep, he looks sixty, or yep, he looks like 40. The divorce, shocking to most people. He wants for Christmas. I don't want people to know. What what you know what that was all about? Tomahawk say no. There's no way it's not going to come out, and the main reason is because political wives are cutthroat. Man, <laughs> there is no messing with these people. So it's going to be one of two things, neither of which he will like. Either he's going to pay out the nose. Now I don't know if this guy has any money, but he better find some. Uh, or Mrs. Sandoval is going to be like, oh yeah. You've heard about all those guys with all their sexual harassment. It's going to go bad, uh, allegedly. So I, I think this is going to be a, uh, a coal. Uh, this yeah, will be coal, coal. for uh, Brian. All right. So our, our next uh, next uh, person wanting to, to sit on Santa Scott's lap is uh, little Stevie Sisolak. Oh. Oh, this is all about politicians. Uh, well, we're starting off that way. Okay. Uh, they, they got to the front of the line. I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> not sure how they did that, but they managed. Oh, I think we uh, know that bribes. too. Yeah. Uh, uh, bribes to elves. Uh, what do they call those far. people? Oh, lobbyists. Correct. The Santa lobby. Uh, so little Stevie, <laughs> um, he, uh, you, you know, he was tried to be very good at the end of the year. He started the Vegas Strong GoFundMe, yeah. which I believe ended up being the, one of the most, or highest grossing GoFundMe's in the history. About twenty two million dollars. Something along those lines. Huge. Now he had a little bit of a guilty conscience though, Santa Scott, because mm. he did help uh bring the Raiders to town and all the associated costs that that are gonna come with that for infrastructure and so he knew he was on the naughty mm -hmm. your naughty list to start with. Mm -hmm. He's trying to make amends at the end of the year, mm -hmm. but his biggest wish, Santa Scott, for mm -hmm. Christmas, little Stevie would like to be the next governor. Oh, does he now? Well, let's see. So the, the whole Raider thing, as everybody knows, Santa Scott was a little against, mm. I was kind of on the fence about the Raiders thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's insane. It continues to be insane. By the way, where's everybody going to park? Oh, by the way, they have to move a flood zone for this stadium. <laughs> That never came up before until like a week ago. They're like, oh, yeah, we have to approve the rem the moving of a flood zone because all of the flood water in all of Las Vegas goes right through where the stadium is. Smarter people you will never find <laughs> in Las Vegas. So, yeah, fantastic move, everybody. Okay. So if it was, if you, if, if little Stevie came to me and said, oh, son of Scott, uh, I, I got the Raiders and, and I would like to be given, I'd be like, shoo, shoo fly, shoo. You don't get to do this. But the Vegas GoFundMe thing was pretty impressive. $22 million. Now, I, I don't know how they're going to distribute that money. And guess what? <laughs> they don't either. I, yeah. And I wouldn't. Would you want to touch that with a 10-foot? No. Tenfold no. Uh, no. No. That's no, like, no, what no. is it? Sophie's Choice or something? Yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Or Castaway Do or whatever it is. Mm. You get some, you don't get some. It's $22 million. So there wasn't 22 million people there. That would be a million dollars a person. It doesn't seem like that hard to me, but eh, what do I know? I'm just Santa Scott. I well, just that would be a throw out 22 people there. No, sorry about yeah. that. I mean, Santa, how many Santa's got omniscient, but still needs not a, a not a math guy. <laughs> right? I, I got I got a I got a you know little elf guy who does it for right. Me. Um, however, the fact that he did such a good job with uh, the Vegas GoFundMe thing, and the fact that. Um, uh, little Brian won't be running for anything, so there's a big gap. Well, well Brian is a Republican. That's correct. And Steve, and Steve is, is a Democrat. Democrat. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot about that. So now the D Nevada, Nevada uh, you know, had half a brain and uh, voted Democratic in the presidential election, if that means anything. Uh, it means everything. We're all a bunch of idiots. Mm. Of course, the best stake here is Outback Steakhouse. So well, no, what are you going to do? That's... I'm going to say um, he's going to run. Mm -hmm. He won't win. Sorry. 
Oh, another Christmas wish going unfulfilled. Sorry, Steve. No ponies being given out here. I would like for him to win only because of the Vegas thing, but I can't have him win because he's a Democrat. Okay. All right. A lot of people didn't know that Santa Scott was a Republican. <laughs> well, I mean, Santa- How do you, we, we're building, we're building, we're a manufacturer. Of course we're Republican. Come on, let's go. Right. And it's cold. Uh, so next up in line, yep. uh, Santa Scott was little Jimmy Murin. Uh, little Jimmy runs MGM. Yep. Uh, of course you knew that already. I did. So Jimmy, he's made a few mistakes in his time. Well, so Ooh, this year wait. in 2017, uh, Jimmy, who had already imposed paid parking on the strip, yep. increased paid parking uh, fees by 39%. Yep. Okay. He, so first of all, he was the first person to do it. That's in 2016. So he opened the floodgate. Correct. Then, in 2017, yep. he took that and inc- upped at 39%. That's fantastic. Right. Because he Jimmy's didn't, he didn't make enough millions already. Because they made millions on right. just the parking. But Santa Scott, by the way, is not happy with that. No, just so you that know. sleigh takes up two spaces. It does. And that's, so I, now I'm paying $28 <laughs> right. just to hang out and give out gifts Correct. to this little punk. It almost doesn't seem fair. No, not really. Uh, now, it wasn't all bad because 2017, oh, thanks Lord. to little Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy did bring the help bring the Golden Knights to town, got in mm-hmm. the Vegas, their first professional mm-hmm. NHL team, mm-hmm. as well as a new WNBA team, the Aces, yeah. for women's pro basketball, yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah. But what Jimmy really wants, he told me, Santa Scott. <laughs> this is fantastic that you're doing this. Jimmy really wants for Christmas a regular a men's NBA team for yeah. Las Vegas. He wants a soul. Um, so he, here's the problem with little Jimmy. Jimmy broke Santa's heart mm-hmm. when he did the parking. Uh, Santa Scott's buddy Scott, who does mm-hmm. a, a lovely little show called Living in Las Vegas, has spoken uh, ad infinitum on the fact that Vegas lost its cool the minute they did paid parking. Lost its cool because it's not hip, and lost its cool because they didn't have enough to, to offer their customers, so they forced them to pay for parking egregious and not by the way there are still casinos that aren't charging for parking which i think is fantastic palazzo venetian for example god bless her little hearts okay uh so paid parking very very bad uh increasing paid parking very very bad times too that's like he took right i mean he ripped out your heart right uh, in 2016 right then he stomped a mud hole in it in 2017 and walked it dry what's that the uh uh, raiders of the lost ark he took the heart and then he showed it to me here here's my increase in 38 percent of parking so then, but you're a Knights fan. Well, so you're, this is interesting. You're a partial season ticket. I, I am, and so and the Vegas Golden Knights, arguably one of the greatest things that have happened to this city. And you would think, well, Santa Scott, I didn't think you were a big sports guy, ah. I, and I most certainly wasn't a hockey guy. But the hockey there is fantastic. Even that they're they're a good team, and that's a shock to everybody, including everybody in the NHL. <laughs> How could you guys win any games? Right, uh, but they are. I don't know how much juice he had to make that happen, to be quite frank. He didn't really get a lot of juice. There's Fozzie. What's, his, what's the guy's name? I forget the guy's name who, is, who owns it, who seemed to really make it happen. I know um, that it was – I know that – Bill Foley. Foley, that's it. Um, I know that, M- that the T-Mobile is partially owned by uh, MGM and – AEG. La- AEG, thanks. Mm-hmm. So the, I, I actually am not going to give him any credit for that. Um, the, the WNBA, we all know why he bought the WNBA is so he could get his Christmas wish. Correct. So, so he doesn't get, all he has is negative. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but Tomahawk uh, it's a, it's a, it's a bag of coal. No, you won't really? be getting, well, so you didn't give me a time frame, but if he thinks he's going to get an NBA team in the next three years, he's not going to get it. Wow. There is going to be a lot of disappointed Vegas children on Christmas morning. Well, these people are all bad. If they could just be, give me, can I have one good kid? Okay. Three All bad right. kids. I think we might have someone. Okay, let's go. Okay. Here we go. All right. Next up uh, in line was little Derek Stevens. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. What are you doing, man? Derek, uh, Derek was, believe it or not, in October of 2017, he was recognized as Citizen of the Month by the city of Las Vegas. There you go. Citizen of the Month. Now, personally, and this, this hurt, this hurt this elf. Uh, yes. uh, personal, you want to talk about ripping your heart out. Derek also closed Mermaids this year. Yes, he did. Which deep fried Oreos and Twinkies, oh, pretty good. They really, they're like, they're like pixie dust. That's what us elves run off of. That's right. Pixie so, dust and cocaine. Uh, that's, that's true. I mean, you got to stay awake. And it's, Red it's Bull. It's long hours. 
Big Sue does remember. So, Red Bull. what okay. Derek wants to know, Santa Scott. Wait, for, wait for, is his only good thing the Citizen of the Month thing? That's his only good thing? Uh, correct. Oh, okay, correct. well, this is great. I, I, it's it's what, I, what I could find. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> that actually speaks volumes. So, so, Santa, what Derek wants uh, on Christmas morning <laughs> is he wants to open a new large resort downtown and be successful where downtown on the site of mermaids the las vegas club and the glitter gold Gold strip well this is an example where santa scott has no say in the matter he will make this happen he will get this he will get his resort oh yeah because he's he's kind of the 800 pound gorilla uh for a variety of reasons in downtown he bought the whole block right when you buy the block you get to do whatever you want in the block Pretty much. You do, but I guess is he is you he think, going so to are you be asking able that to that's going to be one giant oh. and and complete it because typically casino op- there the last casino opening was the Lucky Dragon which the Review Journal just put a hit piece out on and said that uh, over several nights in December they went there and they counted thirteen people. Um, well, that's a pretty crappy location. So so that oh, prior super to that, crappy and last, super niche. The last new casino res- op- to resort to be built from scratch Cosmo. and open. Is Cosmo? Yeah, yeah. There's a large gap there. Mm-hmm. So the building boom is not no. uh, going anymore. Well, so and because of that, so people are. If you do anything, we're going to be supportive of it. But they were. Well, hold on. So they were supportive of um, the Lucky Dragon, whatever that place is called. Lucky Dragon. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody was super supportive of it. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it there was stalled a for a while. It sta- What's that? There was a Haddam done there. Yes, there was. There's mm-hmm. stalled for a while, and it got, a couple times I was there. It's a, it's a small, quaint little thing, but super niche, obviously, and uh, and that limited the, their draw. I, mean, I think they were hoping for people from China to come in, but they got Macau. Mm-hmm. Why, how would you go all the way to Las Vegas to go to a small casino about the size of the studio? I mean, I, I didn't never never understood that part. So. The thing for downtown, though, is that he bought the whole block. He bought from Main Street to First Street. He owns all of that property now. So, you know, with limitations of just building code, he can do whatever he wants, I would assume. Um, And with regards to being funded, I don't know how successful the D is. Um, I'm assuming it's pretty successful. And the Golden Gate, he's got that as well. But those are both private companies right so you don't know his brother yeah yeah yeah, own it via a trust right yeah so nobody knows if they're making money or not or how they're funding and if they're not um but it's you know listen i'm i'm not a huge fan of that guy i but i don't know him either so it's probably not completely fair for me to say that but i haven't heard a lot of bad things about the d i've heard some good things about the d so congratulations for that he's certainly has made more energy happen in the Fremont Street Experience area. There's no question about that. Golden Gate is a nicer property than it was before. The D, which used to be the Fitzgerald. The Fitzgerald, I, I, did you ever walk into the Fitzgerald? Have you Lots ever been? I used to play poker there. So I never walked into that place, ever. I've been in the D several times. So, eh, okay. So is he going to get it? He's going to get what he wants. He knows people. He has people who works for him, who knows people. And I don't know what that means, if it's going to be one giant property or if it's going to be a property. We have Golden Gate at the corner. Mm-hmm. So, the pro- so maybe it might be a property here and then another property here. I don't know. But he's going to, it's going to get built. And everybody wants it built because right now there's nothing there. So he actually has that, that uh, to his advantage. Rest so he may not deserve it, but he's going to get it. Rest in peace, deep fried Twinkies and Oreos. Wink. Pour one out. Okay. Uh, now the, the kids started to get, uh, a little, little anxious, so I couldn't get as much out of, out of these ones. All right. So we're, we're going to move to a more of a, of a lightning round format, just okay. straight to the wishes. Okay. So, uh, Santa Scott, I, I came across, uh, a l- young, uh, little Blake Sartini. Blake is the <laughs> owner of the PT's pubs, uh, that empire oh. that's grown. Um, and his company just purchased the Arizona Charlies on Decatur and Boulder right. and the and Stratosphere. Stratosphere. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, I just saw this in the paper. Okay. Um, uh, again, you Could would Could you pick somebody this. a bit more esoteric that no one's ever heard of before? <laughs> well, but this, I mean, he's, uh, well, I don't want to tell little Blake this. He's not really that important. But but really, his wish, and, and this is why I, I, I thought this was interesting, and I, I chose him for our pre-screened okay, uh, here we children go. travelers list. So... Uh, he has said that he bought Stratosphere, obviously. Yeah. He has claimed that uh, it's good that his company wanted to be on the Strip. Yeah. 
but a history. Did, did you see this Santa's cat? I think I may. Have. A, a a local historian or or somebody uh, in the in the history kind of realm said, "Oh no no no! Oh no no no! Stratosphere's not on the strip. Right. The strip ends at Sahara yeah. and the boulevard. Yeah. So Stratosphere is not on the strip. Yep." Uh, so really what Blake wants for Christmas uh, is kind of like a little validation here. Scott. Yeah. Scott, he wants uh, people to agree that the stratosphere is on the strip. So here's what, here's what Blake, uh, <laughs> no one knows you. No one's ever heard of you, but here's what I'm feeling. Look at the first three, the first four, I've got, a, it's like taking a, a, a piece of peppermint and you're, Oh, I'm going to have some Christmas peppermint. Oh, wait a minute. Salt? What? Uh, vinegar? I, I'm not ready for this. Blake, your wish is granted. It is part of the strip. It's close enough for damn. And by the way, you're in there. You're investing in the property. I appreciate that. That goes down on my n- nice list. I'm inv- investing in a property that, you know, a lot of folks have said, eh, maybe it's not in game anymore. You're like, I think it's in game. And if you needed to be on the strip, Santa Sasa Santa says, that bad boy's on this trip. All right. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Blake. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Santa Scott, uh, along the S alliteration, is uh, a little Stevie Hill. Stevie Hill is the chairman of the Nevada Tourism and Infrastructure Committee that brought the Raiders and expanded the convention center. So he put in a bit. He's 50% Okay. Well, right. So here's the thing. So as part of the being the head of the, you know, uh, tourism and and how we spend those dollars, um, he was the par- person responsible for putting in the bid, and he wants to know Santa Scott, uh, what he really wants for Christmas. Nope. Is Amazon Not HQ two? No. Tomahawk say no. I'm already gonna tell you, it's never gonna happen. And the reason it's never gonna happen is, did you read it's, that? Here's bid? the thing. Well, much like every year has a Tickle Me Elmo, Amazon HQ2 is the new must-have gift for this year. Yeah. I mean, there are cities all over clamoring for this, who knocking are, down who doors and shelves. Who are doing every possible thing they can do, wink, to get that deal. Did, did you read uh, that bid, uh, the, the RFP request for proposal? Uh, I saw someone, like the AP summarized oh, it. Oh, like it's hysterical. Form. And it basically said, I think, 17 times. And if you can do stuff to enhance or motivate, which basically is, you know, taxes, uh, income. uh, And do you think we're going to do that? There is no way. We did pass $750 million to give to the Raiders. Yeah, it's because we're all, we've been upset. The city has been obsessed with a pro sports team for uh, ever. What we're not obsessed with is a pick and pack and place that's got 20, you know, 2,000 or 20,000 people uh, shipping out uh, uh, Tickle Me Elmo's, for example. That ain't it. So, no, uh, Amazon will not be coming here. One more last one, then we'll move on. All right. Uh, And then now, you know, Santa Scott, if anything else, stands for diversity. It does. So I had to find I had to find somebody that that uh, wasn't a white male here. Fantastic. Uh, so I went with an Asian male. I found a little Asian kid in nice. mine. Very good. Uh, little Tony Shea. Oh, Jesus. And Tony, what, what are you doing? Tony to Shea would, uh, his wish, more than anything else, Santa, he wants downtown to continue to gentrify. Well, of course he does. So is little, he going to get his wish? Little Tony Shea was all that a bag of chips for about 3.5 years. Mm-hmm. He was on, he was selling books, mm-hmm. had the, the, the something of happiness. And, delivering happiness. Yeah, delivering happiness. Mm-hmm. And he was spending millions and millions of dollars uh, doing stuff and hoping for collisions. Do you know about collisions? Collisions is when, uh, I believe, uh, two people That's right. come together. So what he wanted is, you know, everybody just kind of hang out, and he's a drinker, and, you know, we'll, we'll collide during a bar crawl, and mm-hmm. business will happen. No. Not a lot of suicides happened. A couple of those took place during that time. And then he said, yeah, that whole uh, neighborhood thing. We're kidding. We're going to take that out of our of our mantra Uh, community. Yeah. We're going to pull that out and just kind of say, how about you make a couple dollars? Yeah. And, you know, I've seen some of the businesses that he backed. Uh, there is no business there. It didn't happen. And by the way, he's backing businesses that you'd be shocked he backs. For example, Heart Attack Grill. Mr. Shea, who is, you know, Mr. 
good guy and he's probably he looks like a vegan maybe kind of guy no he's back in the most poisonous restaurant he's a 51 percent shareholder in the most poisonous restaurant in the world allegedly one of those parts uh he wants what more gentrification whatever gentrification. more more the thing. neighbors it, yeah I mean, well shit of course he does they, they ripped out do. and remodeled uh the the gold uh, uh the golden spike gold spike gold spike um, they put in the, the Container Park Mall, you know, Container yeah. Park, the mall, mm-hmm. with built out of the shipping containers. By the way, that gold spike is a good clue for this coming at them. Um, they, you know, they invest, they created their downtown project. They yeah. created some startups. Yeah, and yeah. They did a lot to that, you know, Fremont East kind of area. But really, there's been nothing lately. So I don't think he cares anymore. I don't think he cares a damn thing about it. All he cares about is shipping shoes. And that's fine. Everybody else cares about that. Everybody wants downtown to be a, a big boy downtown. Right now, it's not a big boy downtown. It's a bro downtown still. Now, there's some good things happening down there. Fremont Street Experience, that's always been the same. That's not going to change. Fremont East, fantastic. Probably my favorite pizza place in all of uh, Las Vegas is on Fremont Street. So yeah, there's, and there's some great bars there, and there's some good restaurants there. So there, it's, they did a nice job. By the way, none of that happened because of Shea. All that happened because of the city of Las Vegas was basically giving stuff away to get people to go in there. <clears throat> so I don't think he cares at all in any way or anymore because he got, I think he got beat up a little bit about this whole thing. Uh, but overall, anybody who lives in Las Vegas, including your good buddy Santa Scott, wants downtown to become more of a place where people can live. Because right now, I don't have a sense for how many people actually live down there. It doesn't feel like San Diego downtown. No, I mean you got the Ogden, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know, and Gold Spike was it was like a temporary housing thing for right. Zappos employees when they first moved to downtown. And then they like they kicked those people out. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. And now it's 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 a bar. Adamant. And that's basically it. You know, it's got giant Jenga. That's mm-hmm. what Gold Spike's kind of known for. Um, so I, I think there are many, many other people who want downtown to have housing. But the, the other issue is where, where are you going to put them? You have to build apartments or condos. So where are you going to put them? Now, now, here's where little Tony Shea might be in game is he owns a bunch of property down there. He went out and bought a shitload of property. So he may have, you know, a, a spot on the corner of Fremont and 7th or whatever it is that's open that maybe he could build something. So that he, ah. Uh, so he might, he might get that. He might get what he wants there. Wow. That was like a lightning bolt. Hoo-wee. That was fantastic. Okay. Well, Santa Scott just stepped on a reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> and saw stars. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. That was fantastic. Okay, we're going to take a quick break here. <laughs> wow. We got to get you back. We wow. got to yeah, get you back to the, to the workshop. Okay, thank you, little elf. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and have a large um, amphetamine-based <laughs> drink, shall we? Here we go. Woo. Oh man. Come on. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> All right. Santa Scott has left the building in an ambulance. <laughs> Thank God for Santa Scott. And uh, actually, you know what the big trend is right now? Instead of calling an ambulance, you call Uber. It's really? Cheap. Yeah, it's cheaper. Oh. But that? there's a cleaning fee, so like if you're like well, if you're bleeding, or, if you should yeah, do that. You but if you're, you know, if you're if you're not feeling good, for example, if somebody kicked your foot that just had surgery on it and there's stitches <laughs> it and it's not, and, oh, and somebody was, kicked it, to be fair, to that, be fair, that you might were in be my a, space. that might be a reason to call Uber and go, hey, uh, <laughs> help me, I did, please, I did three minutes, across. come across and give me a help. Okay, it's time for that. Uh, have a drink on me. Um, this would be a good time if uh, it would be have a morphine on me because literally I am seeing stars right now, but you wouldn't know it. Okay, have a drink on me. It's part of the show where um, I, 
Man, that really felt fantastic. <laughs> Where I feel I bad you, and me. you should, you evil elf. First of all, you give me all these horrible people that you want me to tell them you're naughty. Yes, you're naughty. Yes, you're naughty. And then you kick me in the foot. <laughs> Holy Christ, what do, you, what do you want from me? Why, okay. Why was your foot under my legs? Okay, I, well, I was just stretched out because I'm a cripple. <laughs> my God, okay. Um, you know what? Let's, let's let... Uh, maybe Pops will tell us how the whole thing works. Pops, help us out. Hey, kids. Pops here. Five-time Adam winner. I know what you're thinking. Pops, you old fuck. How can one old guy keep winning a contest over and over and over? Well, did you know there's bonus entries available? After you send in your initial qualifying entry email with the correct had them answer to have a drink at VegasVideoNetwork.com, you can get bonus entries for being in the live chat during the drawing or by sending in a video for the Haddam contest, or by doing a video intro for the show, or being quick on the draw and being the first person with a qualifying entry email in to have a drink at VegasVideoNetwork.com. And don't worry if you're quick on the draw but you jump the shark. If you're wrong when you send in your first answer, you can send in a corrected email. It'll still get entered as long as it comes in in time, and we'll just tease you over being wrong the first time. If you win, you're not qualified to win a following week. No back-to-back -back wins. But it is polite to pop in and say thank you very much to Scott Whitney and Yay. the cast and crew at the Living in Las Vegas podcast on the Vegas Video Network. Thank you, Pops. Good man, good man. Now, we're going to go ahead and try to get through the prize part of this show without getting kicked by the evil elf over there. I'm hoping that's going to go very well for us. Um, yeah, you, you send in your guesses, and you have a chance to win a variety of really amazing things. And uh, I'm going to show that, show you what it is with almost no flinching while, <laughs> while the, our evil elf, Wayne, tells you about what you could win. Wayne? You know, some people secretly cry on the inside. However, if you're crying on the outside... <laughs> You can get yourself a Vegas Video Network visor. Just pull that down low. It's adjustable. It'll fit over your head. Just pull that down right over your eyes, and nobody will see the tears welling up. Also, uh, the stars will come through much clearer because you'll be blacked out anyways. Uh, so the Vegas Video Network visor can really help you uh, conceal the tears. Yeah. Next up, do you need to be soothed down because you're all worked up? You're all antsy? Uh, maybe, again, you want to cry out in pain uh, and can't find the button for the morphine drip? Liquid morphine can be yours in the form of Chris Acoustic, nice Chris Acoustic 2, Orchid Jazzathon. Just push play and just feel that sweet, <laughs> sweet music Lean back. Just, just take you into another state of being. It's okay. You'll be all right. And finally, do you know in the Civil War times, before anesthetic, they used to just get soldiers drunk before they would do amputations? Nothing wrong with that. Other major surgery? Okay. Well, if stick. you don't have any pain pills handy either, much like Scott didn't, nope. you can continue to just drink yourself in alcohol. Didn't know. Get yourself uh, a win, and then you can schedule a date uh, with Scott. Now, he's married, so it's not that kind of date. It's no. not like Tinder or it's Grindr. Uh, swipe right. Right, correct. Or left. But you can get together, and he'll buy you a drink, and you can drink away the pain, either yeah. either external or internal as well. Very good. Thank oh, you, Wayne. No discrimination here. All right. Okay, there we go. Now, there's another thing that happens, of course, if you become a, a winner and you win yourself one of them there groovy visors. Oh, do you get a ride on the scooter? <laughs> I'm going to have to be pushed on the scooter back to my house. Melissa's yeah. going to like, how was the show? Oh, fantastic. If you mean, um, how was the assault? <laughs> well, the assault was fantastic. I got, oops, get away from there. The assault was fantastic. I got beat up by Wayne. He kicked me in the foot. I started to cry like a little girl. It was a great show. Everybody really liked right. it. Um, anyways. It's going to pull in our best Nielsen yet. Yeah, it'll be the fantastic. It'll be fantastic. Anyway, so uh, if you uh, find yourself as a winner and you get yourself one of these here visors, whoa. You, take, you put that on your head, you take a picture of it, you send that picture back to us, and all of a sudden magic happens. That's right. You become part of the galaxy of gods. 
there's Steve and Michael and Robert and Rosie and Michael and then there's Scott and Pinky and Bud and Ellen and Aaron and Bob and Bob's wife. Then there's Danny, who sent a poem in tonight. I can't wait to read it. And Shanna, Chen and Craig and Glenn and Jimmy and Rob and Ken, there's Stuart and Christina, whose all babies are because of my music. And then there's Don and Jackie. And Michael oh, no! And of course there's Brett, Dad and Scott And your friend Wayne Who hits people And of course Brett Okay, very good Let's see what we What's that ringing in your ears? Pain? Complete and utter pain So we had uh, 19 out of 20 Correct answers for last week's Haddam 19 out of 20 Here is last week's Haddams And the hints were The laundry room the Laundry Room, and of course, The Laundry Room, which is part of the Commonwealth. It's the hidden secret bar inside the Commonwealth. Okay? All right. Let's get our hat out here. 19 out of 20. One person guessed. Oh, I forget what it was. <laughs> I can't really think much beyond this immediate circle of pain that I... I basically, I'm seeing everything is red now. Is everything red to you guys? I or barely touched made? you. All That's all. Was... Did you see the scar? Did you, did you no, watch the I, Facebook picture? It looks no, no, like no. Frankenstein. I just uncrossed my legs. It was unbelievable. That's, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, so here we go. Uh, number one, Johnny Bravo. One for the correct answer, one for being uh, the first correct answer. And then we've got boop, 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 Woody Acord. One for the correct answer. One for being in the live chat. Well done, Woody. We've got Dan Jaggers. One for the correct answer. One for being in the live chat. Already multiple doubles. Next up, we've got Mike Q, one for the correct answer, one for being in the live chat. We've got Jimmy 2Gs, or Jimmy Gallagher. We've got one for the correct answer, one for being in the live chat. Holy crap, this is fantastic. Was the last one? Jimmy Gallagher. Oh, okay. So many Jimmys. Jimmy 2Gs. Next up, we have Mr. Testy, also known is as Gary. Jimmy Gallagher that, like, uh, smash the watermelons? Yes, he's with that family. You know what he doesn't do? He doesn't smash Cripple's feet. You evil, evil bastard, you. <laughs> Mr. Testy, Gary Romberg, one for the correct answer, one for being in the live chat. <laughs> hey, it's a tough room. Mm -hmm. Clearly, otherwise I didn't think it'd be. The, this is my room and it's a tough room. Holy crap. <laughs> Next up, we've got uh, Monica Fagan, uh, one for the correct answer, one for being in the live chat. Next up, we've got uh, Richard C., who goes by Phase Jitter, who's in the live chat. One for the correct answer, one for being in the live chat. Holy camoles, the live chatters are taking over. Next up, we've got Mike. C. Hmm? Richard C. Uh, Richard C., yeah. As in crying. Yeah, as in cry like a little girl after right. being kicked by a so-called friendly elf. Mike Beatty, who writes, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Mike. Next week, I've got Bob Thomas, who lives in St. Augustine, Florida. Thank you, Bob. John Herman from New York City. New York City! Yep. We've got Paul P. Also goes by Condor954. One for the correct answer. Paul P. gets one for being in the live chat. Way to go, Paul. Andy in New Hampshire. Andy's been playing for a long time, and I'm not sure he's won... I feel bad for Andy. So one for the correct answer, one because I feel bad for him. Oh, look at Santa Scott. Finally Santa Scott. Just happened. Right, probably because I'm in, I'm just racked with pain. And I can't even think straight. <laughs> and then we got uh, John Weiler who says he loves my show. Thank you, John. Then we've got Eric who writes he just moved to Vegas two months ago, and this place, the laundry room, is the first place he was recommended to go to on Fremont Street. Way to go, Eric. And then we've got Danny Ackerman, one for the correct answer, one for being in the live chat. And Danny has a poem. And since Danny is a female type, you get to read it. Really? Because you kicked up an octave or two. Yeah, so. well, I feel like I did, but go ahead. Uh, <laughs> and, Danny, and Danny writes, oh, it's time once again for some wit. Uh, as this answer for Haddam, I get. 
I'm just making sure you pronounce it right. Don't bring socks or soiled towels, though the name would allow. Just be ready to get a bit lit. The laundry room speakeasy on Fremont Street. Uh, lit Street. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, Scott and Wayne, and the awesome L I L V chat. Uh, that's right. Thank you, Danny. I like her. I like her poems a lot. She's a good poem maker. Wait, as this answer for Adam, okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, it's time once again for some wit. And this answer for how do I get? Don't bring socks or so- soiled towels, though the name would allow, just to be ready to get lit. That's the end of the poem. Then she says it's the laundry room. Hmm. You right. made it sound like the laundry room was part of the poem, and in fact was not. Hmm. Okay. No. Oh, okay. I thought it was supposed to be. No. My bad. That's why I reread it to help her out because even though I'm still in racked with pain, Correct. I wanted to help the the poets. Oh, out you there. still got that. I mean, that's why the <sighs> you're just like there was a guy in here, Santa Scott. We booked him because uh, a stripper Santa was unavailable on such short notice. <laughs> right. But he's not um, making a real living. Boy, right now. does he deck the halls. Woo! But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he really has that giving that uh, you two share that giving. That giving of course we do. And uh, finally, we've got uh, Pops. One for the correct answer. Pops, one for being in the live oh, I chat. I just do that. <laughs> <laughs> Six-time winner. One for the uh, being in the live chat. And then one more for his video submission. Pops, take it away. Hey, kids. Just in case your audio or video feed was a little bit choppy during the last show, I'm going to repeat Everybody. what I said. Kind of laid out a challenge to you guys. I've won the Adam Contest six times. I'm probably gonna win the Adam Contest some more. Would you like to snag a prize from me? Here's how you do it. Enter the contest, be in the live chat during the show, and send in a video, either a show intro video or a Adam intro video. If my name is drawn as the winner of the Adam Contest and you have those three things, an entry, you're in the live chat, and you had a video played on that show, I'll give you my prize. If more than one person qualifies for that prize, hell, we'll let Wayne pick the winner. <laughs> no, it won't. Merry Christmas, Pops. There we go. Thank you, Pops. All right. There are a ton of doubles in here. Oh, yeah. And a couple of triples. Really? If you're not a double or a triple, I mean... You've got no chance. No. Okay, here we go. Let's go, evil, evil, <laughs> kicker, kicker. <laughs> Literally, if I think back of that, I, I actually pee myself a little about how much that damn thing hurt. You know, that's where, it's funny you mentioned that, because <laughs> my, boss, my boss tells me he was, he was at a Christmas party socializing with someone in insurance, and they said you should always carry a water bottle with you in the car, because if you ever get into an accident, you want to spill the water bottle on yourself, because if, if you pee yourself in an accident, it's automatic pain and suffering. That's fantastic. So, uh, criminal intent uh, from the, the boss, yeah. that's fantastic. So, that's just what I was told. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who who won? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you can see this because you're still seeing red. Jimmy Gallagher, everybody. What do you go, Jimmy 2Gs? I think he's a previous winner. So he'll either win. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. I can't even see straight. Where you go, Jimmy? Oh, uh, Jimmy is going to get an email from us uh, tomorrow-ish. And I will ask right. him what he would like to be. If I'm out of the emergency room tomorrow, <laughs> to, you will absolutely yeah. get an email yeah, from me. Can, Otherwise, yeah, you're on your own. I'll tell you what, you don't need to call an Uber. You can get in the back of my Civic. Fantastic. That's what I want to get in the back of your Civic. Okay, let's look at this. Brand new, I mean. I'm a fa- well, well, that's, well, great. Zero, you're spending your money on, on cars instead of taking care of your buddy Scott. All right. Uh, here's this week's Have a Drink on Me. And here are the hints. Uh, the first hint is we talked about it at the beginning of the show. Okay. Hint number one. It's rumored to have had Zappos employees living there when the company first moved to downtown. Uh, hint number one. It's rumored to have had Zappos employees living there when the company first moved to downtown. Hint number two. It could have been named after somebody who sold over 500,000 records and knew how to build a railroad. Could have been named after somebody who sold over 500,000 records and knew how to build a railroad. Hit number three. For fans of the periodic table, the first word would be AU. For fans of the periodic table, the first words would be A, the letter A, 
and you the letter U. If you know that place you're going to send it to have a drink, at VegasVideoNetwork.com. Again, have a drink at VegasVideoNetwork.com. All right. Scott, that's that's about it. I mean... Got a little time left. Gosh, it's... Uh, you know, yours gone by already. I'm throwing up a little Christmas music. You can't hear it because you've given up on the headphones for some reason. I've noticed this over the last couple... Of sh- you're, you're kind of like the rebel elf. You're like, no headphones. I don't need no... He- I don't need to know how the show's going. I'll just hang out here and kick you in the foot. Maybe have a, <laughs> maybe have a Zima. You know, whatever it takes. Um, but anyways, I wanted to wish everybody uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, a, a great New Year's Eve. This year's been a little wacky. Uh, in a lot of ways, both good and what the fuck bad. And so uh, it's good that the year is over. And um, I hope everybody has a, a good holiday season. We hope to have a good holiday season. As a matter of fact, part of our new year is we're going to be uh, building a new set at the uh, studio. We have we have basically four stages in the studio now. And the first one, our stage one, is our fixed set. That was the one that uh, Wayne and I did a couple of shows on. And we're redoing that whole thing. New lighting, new furniture, new set pieces. We're really getting at this thing. Um, and at the same time, we're also getting some new streaming, uh, streaming equipment. I'm getting a brand new TriCaster, their latest TriCaster. We're putting that in there as well. Oh, so if anybody pretty, wants to... Expensive goodies under the tree. Santa's not, Scott is. And Scott's going to be paying that for a long time. But if anybody wants to buy a TriCaster 850 or a 460, I've got a couple of them. Or a... Oh, what's that thing called? Talk Show 1000. I'm selling them all, kids, because my one box does all those things now. Um, and new show potential. Um, there may be uh, many years ago, I forget how long ago it's been, I did a show about how to sue somebody in Las Vegas. That was a, a, a good show. Got a lot of positive feedback, and that ended up being a positive thing for me. Kinda. I won. Eh, I didn't so see this show, right? Huh? This show? It was on here. We okay. Did it. Yeah, yeah. And so... Yeah, I was saying, that doesn't seem very Cup of Morning Sunshiny. No, oh, no, no. This was a Living in Las Vegas show. So what's going to be fantastic is it looks like we'll be doing another one of those shows where I'll walk you through what it's like to sue somebody in All Las right. Vegas. So we're, uh, we've put out a demand letter. Um, I expect that demand letter will be ignored, as every demand letter is. And I will be filing suit against somebody who yes. decided it wasn't uh, necessary to pay us. And I think that's bullshit. And uh, we're not going to have that, hopefully. The participants will not be actors. They'll be actual They'll litigants. They'll be the real guys. Case pending in Las Vegas Municipal Court. So I'll walk you through what that's all about. Because, you know, it's been a while. It's been what six years five years something like that since the last time i did this yeah so it's about time every five years the riviera was still standing <laughs> it was because that's where we serve notice so uh so what you, you've got that to look forward to is is uh, what's it like to sue somebody in las vegas also i want to publicly thank bryce krausman of house seats presents uh he last week he did his final show episode 90 on the vegas video network fantastic very impressive um, I'm surprised he went that long. Uh, it's hard to do 90 shows. And these are weekly shows. I know how hard that is. And he did it, and he never complained. He seemed to have a great time. I think he did. Um, and uh, he's a great guy. I really enjoyed hanging out with him uh, and, and hope to continue to do so. Uh, great guy. A lot of fun. Knows a lot of fun people. Um, he may be back with either that show. He's, we've been talking about another show for some time now. But he's a busy guy. He's got, you know, he runs DW Bistro. He runs House Seats. Um, so he's got a lot on his plate. Um, so it kind of makes sense for him to take uh, take a break here. But we've become very, very good friends as a result of, of his hanging out at the network. So uh, I wanted to say to him, thanks much, Bryce. You're, you're one of the best. And by the way, yes. I did get him drunk on Honey Jack when we first talked about it, the show. And that, yes, that's how he got into this mess with me. So, uh, again, Bryce, thanks for, uh, for playing along with us. Uh, that's it. Anything that you'd like to say, everybody, before we do the Gachasathon music and get out? Oh, gosh. Just a Merry Christmas to everyone. A Happy New Year. Uh, I love all my fans out there. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for just uh, uh, everything. And... Uh, I hope to, you know, we'll come back strong and and continue to entertain people oh, for a, another year. I should add that the show, our show, will be produced at the studio again, uh, beginning next year when we get the new setup set up, oh, set up, set up. My that, agent didn't tell me that. Yet, that's but. the plan. So uh, 
you may ask yourself, are we going to put a panic cam on Nick? Eh, maybe. Maybe. Because this new TriCaster is a whole different beast, so he's, he's going to be up to his eyeballs and trying to figure this thing out. Anyways, uh, that's it, everybody. We'll uh, put an end to that and start that. All right. Hey. And then 2017. Goodbye, 2017. Hey, if you guys want to reach out to us, it's easy to do. You can send us an email at honorq at livinginlv.com. Again, honorq at livinginlv.com. If you want to send us a voicemail, you can do it with your computer. Hell, just go to your website, or hell, go to our website. Click that little red tab on the right side. You'll see a box that pops up. Click start recording, and you'll be able to leave us a voicemail because you've got a microphone attached to your computer. We're on all the social media stuff. We're on iTunes. We're on YouTube. We've got over 70,000 people who have installed our account on Roku. We're on Stitcher. Tune in Chromecast, Apple, Google, and Fire TV, Google Play, and of course, the Vegas Video Network. Hey, I'm Scott. That there's your buddy Wayne. We'll see you guys next year on the Vegas Video Network. Take care, everybody.